the UK high street is transforming, but what will it look like in 2030? And what are the opportunities for property investors? Well, recently I was invited to join a panel on a TV programme to discuss exactly this subject. Now, as many of you know, I've been investing in developing properties for the last 30 years. I've also been investing specifically in commercial property and UK high streets for the last 20 years. I run the UK's leading training on commercial property investing and developing. I'll leave a link to uh, the courses that we run uh, in the description below. But for now, grab a pen and paper, take some notes, because this is a very exciting and heating, heated discussion on the future of the UK high streets, and more specifically, how savvy property investors can profit from this transformation that's taking place right now. So have a watch and let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you agree, disagree? Are you investing in commercial property? Do you have any questions on commercial property investing? Let me know in the comments below. Hello and welcome to Property Summits, the must-watch show for property investors and developers alike. I'm Emma Birchley and with me today are not five but six experts at the top of their game. First off, our newest member, Ranjan Bhattacharya. He's an investor, YouTuber, mentor and all-round authority when it comes to the world of property. Hello gentlemen, nice to see you all. Hi. So, the high street, we know that it's changed a lot, hasn't it? Um, Ranjan, what do you think it could look like come 2030? I think it's a fantastic question because I think there's a lot of talk about it dying. If you look at a lot of the media, they talk about it dying. And I don't think it's dying, it's transforming. And it's, the question is what it's transforming to and how can property investors profit from that transformation? And I think it's transforming from a place where people have bought stuff to a place where people do stuff. Um, you don't need to buy stuff on the high street, it's all going to get delivered. That's going to accelerate. There's also the um, death of cash, which has um, uh, got accelerated during COVID. Uh, you don't need the banks anymore. You know, well before 2030, most, if not all, high street banks are going to shut down. And you know, I'll make a little prediction. I think by 2030, the amount of these convenience stores we have on the high streets will go down as well. The, um, the Tesco metros, the Sainsbury's locals and the co-ops and all of that, you know, because we've got um, uh, uh, you, th th these sort of places don't need to be in high street locations. They can be in off high street locations. Uh, they're already trialing autonomous deliveries and all of that. You'll be able to order your tea or milk and have it delivered in an hour. Couple that with AI, you know, where they know that how, mu how much milk every household is buying a week. It's quite easy then to make sure the right amount of inventory is in those off high street locations to deliver those um, uh, regular shopping items to households. So I see the high street changing from a place where people have bought stuff to, the, to a place where people do stuff. So this is not going and buying a new pair of trousers, no. but it's going to have your hair cut because you can't buy a haircut on the internet. <laughs> you can't cut your hair on the well, internet. Unless Nick, you're, of course, <laughs> unless you're Nicholas, who has his own clippers and does it himself, it turns out. Yeah. I think that Sorry. tells us everything we want to know about Nicholas Woolworth, <laughs> if you don't mind yeah. saying. He just, has, he just can't that. afford it. No, unbelievable. No, I can't. The, the, when, you know, since I came off the street and been living in one of Don's hostels, <laughs> um, the, the rent's so bloody high, I can't do anything. So, anyway, no. back to the point. Back to the point. We're not buying stuff on the high street. We're doing stuff. But it's different and, stuff as yeah. well. I think the, um, the days of the chain, um, and the sort of identikit type of high street. I'm not talking about shopping malls, by the way. That, that, those, I think, will remain those destination type of centres that we've still got, um, because a lot of these brands still need showcase places to, sh to show mm. stuff. Um, I'm talking about the regular high street where you walk up and down. Um, I think uh, uh, there's no need for those sort of chains to be represented there. They've shut down at an alarming rate. Um, the amount of stores that shut down during the COVID uh, lockdown year was more than in any other year in the previous 30 years. But what very few of the media outlets actually pointed out was 17,000 stores actually opened up in, uh, in 2021. And those weren't set stores that were typically selling products, they were offering experiences. So even in, I mean, we've got a tenant uh, in one of our commercial properties, they've opened up what they call a tap room. And I wasn't really that familiar with these sort of things. They're places where people um, experience speciality beers, but they're like pubs, but they're more boutique. They're, they're um, on a micro level as opposed to a, 
national chain of places where you get all the branded beers and that kind it's of stuff. It's unique experiences. It's unique experiences. Yeah. It's more catered for the local uh, sort of environment. And as people want to do stuff on the high street, um, more and more people will want to live on the high street because there's a surplus of space. And thanks to various permitted development rules, they're now able to be repurposed. I think there's two amount of, there's two things that the government have done which have been fantastic. One is the permitted development that allows unused commercial spaces to be repurposed to residential. But there's also repurposing commercial to commercial. If you get a bank building and you wanted to make a restaurant, you'd used to have to apply for planning permission and it'd probably be refused. Now, thanks to changes and they, they all becoming part of usage class E, you can repurpose an office to a restaurant, a restaurant to a retail store, a retail store to a gym. You can do all of that without applying for planning permission. often these banks work really well, don't they, actually, with bars and restaurants, because yes. they're quite imposing buildings often. They're in the centre of the pitch, um, and they're, they're imposing buildings, they look attractive, they're actually absolutely ideal for, for that sort of repurposing, yeah. One of the problems I've had with, uh, and by the way, what Ranjan said, I totally agree with you, Ranjan, couple of things. One, I found that we've got some empty space at the moment and where we could get a national tenant to go in them and spend 200,000 fitting it out. At the moment, I can't get um, national tenants to go in. I can only get local tenants to go in. Of course, they won't spend the money to fit it out. So I'm going to have to fit them out, which, which is a burden to me. The high street rents have gone down by half. Anything in the high street, if it comes vacant or if the tenant can uh, comes to the rent review and it's not an upward only rent review they're halving the rent and some are some are going down two thirds you say they're halving the rent the that's, tenant is that's saying, the tenant saying if you want me afford. to stay yeah. I'm, that's okay. what i'm going to pay but what i would say is that high streets are not dead you know we've got a number of tenants going in the high street into high street uh, locations that we own but at a lot less rent a rent that they can afford to make it work for them and that's important because up till, you know, until COVID came, they were paying far too much rent. And most of the, peop most of the companies that have um, uh, disappeared were always going to disappear. They've just disappeared quicker because of what's happened with COVID and, and everything else. They were always weak, weak businesses. And that's what happens when you have turbulence is that, you know, the weaker ones yeah. go to the, and new ones come up. And that's what's happening now. And how many opportunities are, are there or how much opportunity is there now for someone with an idea um, who wants to set up their own little business on the high street, um, knowing that the rents are less? Well, what I would say is 10 years ago, they would have no chance of getting on the high street. Not, not, not of these smaller um, business. And we wouldn't be in a position to be able to buy anything on the high street because, because all the, the companies that were buying these investments on the high street were pension com companies at four or 5% yields. Now, um, a local tenant can get on the high street, which is a great opportunity, opportunity for them. And we're able to buy on the high street, which we're never able to do till now. Can I just come on, on something you said about the rents? I think it's a very uh, micro markets across the UK. Um, there are areas where commercial rents and particularly shop rents have fallen dramatically. And I think um, with repurposing, by the way, it's going to be a mixed market across the UK sure. because there are areas where um, uh, developers like us will, will enter the space and do it because the land values make sense. But there are areas uh, up north where the land values don't make sense. The conversion and the uh, compliance with building regulations and energy efficiency and all of that make the building work uneconomic. So the government will have to help those areas be repurposed, but they don't have to in the more prosperous but, areas. But Ranjan, they have done because of the town, the town fund, which is 25 million to 117 towns in the UK. You know, that, that, you know they are trying to level up. And, tr and, and the great thing there is that on, on the back of that, or back of the, 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 the town funds and the spending 25 million in that town, an investor can get in, come in on the back of that and benefit from, from all that uplift that's, you know, that's happened in that area. So that's, that's really good. I mean, the point I was trying to make on the rents is that we're dealing in particular areas at the moment in the, in the southeast of England where um, they're in prosperous footfall areas. And the local authorities have always resisted restaurant, restaur restaurantification. Right. And now, thanks to Class E, they can't. No. So what is happening is that um, you, are, you can pick up former bank buildings and get restaurant operators in there and actually get an increase on the rent. 
um, simply because they want that pitch and they could never get in that area before. Now, I think there's first mover op opportunities in all the markets across the UK. It's just figuring out what they are, but it's on a local level, I think. We'll get back to the video in just a moment. What is the most exciting opportunity in property right now? And that is repurposing defunct commercial buildings to residential use. Now, most people don't really know where to start, what to look for and how to exploit these opportunities. And that's why I've prepared 90 minutes of free training for you to get you started on this wonderful journey. You can register for this free training at property-workshop.com. Join me on that free training and I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of the video about the fact that lots of people are working from home even though we're kind of on the tail end of the pandemic it's fundamentally shifted hasn't it the way lots of people work um, forgetting the big town centres but if you think of like the smaller community high streets has that changed things because maybe people aren't going to London and or wherever it might be and getting their coffee from a big chain but they want to pop out at lunchtime and go to a local cafe for example yeah i think it's changing the footfall in the, in small towns and big cities because people are working from home and not going to the office but like ranjan says that creates opportunity for that those spaces to be used and for those people to be served locally i mean we're, we're funding a, a mixed use um uh, development in braintree which is a small town it doesn't have a great footfall but the first thing to sell were the two uh, commercial spaces on the ground floor. Uh, and they were going to small operators as opposed to national yeah. chains, and yeah. they got a good price for them. So I still think there's good opportunity for, for people with commercial. You, you, no one can deny, though, that high streets have changed, haven't they, in that in many areas there are loads of charity shops, there are loads of bookies and things like that. Is that going to change, do you think? It's constantly changing, isn't it? It's constantly changing, isn't yeah. It? Yeah, and I think the, I think the, the bookies is one example of a, a leisure activity. So, will there be more of those? Quite likely, if it's you know if it falls within the use classes, and it they doesn't can, though. I mean, I think the bookies the bookies is a, is is something which has gone online for the younger generation, yeah. and the older generation are still in there with their cloth cap. I, I think that I think the bookies situation is phasing out. <clears throat> uh, they will have them in certain areas. Um, and in certain areas, they've got two because the, the, the new rules only allow them to have so much of a payout on those cash machines. Yeah, much lower. So mm. they now have two in some areas to, to oh, balance Oh, right, that. OK. But I think on the, whole, um, uh, on the whole, I think you'll find them more going online. What about estate agents? Relevant area. <laughs> <Yeah. Well, laughs> <laughs> oh. Where do we start? <laughs> I suppose in some ways I've been involved in an estate agency from pioneering, pioneering the use of mortgage brokers in them um, in, in the mid-80s. People need somewhere to live, whether it's to rent, buy, whether it's to source. So doing it online is one thing, but at the end of the day, there's nothing like, and that's why I'm so gl glad that we've come out of the pandemic and actually meet people for real, to actually meet somebody in the flesh look them in the eye and go and see something you can only get and, and people say that the camera never lies well of course it lies a wide angle lens, lens is a magical thing for you especially property with developers state, especially with the state agents <laughs> Mikey, i thought this was vast and you can like barely swing a cat yeah I don't get me on swinging cats but anyway <laughs> um so as long as people want a roof over their head yeah, they want somewhere to eat they want to get cash or a variety of it then there's still a market for, you know, estate agency well, in a big high street or a small you, one. You say that. I mean, we actually, we're just opening another estate agency, yeah. would you believe? So, so we've got five in Norfolk. We're opening the sixth one. But actually, that's almost because it's an older generation there. Mm. If you talk to Paul and Nicholas, what are your thoughts? Because at the end of the day, you know, you're younger than the rest of us, sadly. Um, I'm very excluded. Well, pa Paul and I both are used <laughs> to selling investment <laughs> properties Thanks, online, right? So we've, we've done that for many years know. between us. Um, but in terms of yeah. homes, I still think, you know, certain people don't want to show people around their home. They want a third party to do it yes. for privacy reasons. Yes. And privacy is an all time high of everyone wanting to protect their privacy you online. You don't need to be coming from an office though, do you, I suppose? Property is going more and more online, but I think estate agents definitely still have a place on the high street. 
you know, that mm. one of the main things that I stop and look at when I'm on a high street is the properties in the window How of an estate agency. How old fashioned you are. <laughs> <laughs> I thought and especially you'd be flicking if, it through your phone. Especially if it's a new area, I don't really know the area, I always stop and have a look at what the prices are and what yeah. the rents are and all that Perhaps sort of thing. you're getting old. I don't usually go in, but still, I think that they do have a place. You know, I, I've got a personal experience with this. I've got some supplement stores in Australia. So it's, this isn't just a UK thing. We've just shut one of the stores, which was on the high street. We still have the shop. And there's a there's a smash lab going into it now, which is where it's you go and those. you go and break things with a baseball Give bat over. to get serious. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. I think wow. John needs to go there and get out some of his uh, yeah. tension. That, that would that, happen in England. You know that ties in well with what Ranjan was saying. Was this was a, a shop that you know was selling things that can be quite easily bought online now, and more and more people have been doing that over the pandemic, which is what's made that shop difficult to going and having an experience in that same location. Wow, that's amazing. I think um, the resurgence of the um, internet calf, which I think died a death in the early noughties, but it's going to come back because it, the internet calf will come back as a way of a, um, a sort of mini serviced office uh, on the high. Haven't got to heat your own home, go and have someone else's heating. It's, well, <laughs> people, are not, uh, people are working from home. But not yeah. everyone has the dining room, the office in the back of the garden, the spare yeah. bedroom and Absolutely, all of that. Yeah. And you want a separate space sometimes. Exactly. You don't want to be going from one room to the other. There was about yeah. 50 exactly. people working in the really? cafe just across the road. And networking and, you know, pe people like to work with other people. It's very lonely if you're, if you're working from home all the time on your own. And I think most people seem to be going into the office a couple of days a week or whatever probably is about or two or three days a week. But of course, it's great for the environment. It's great for family life, isn't it? The, the fact that let, well, you can, you know, it's smart time, isn't it? Let, let's talk about how the council react to this, though. I mean, the council have got, and we're going to talk on another episode about PD rights and how they're being affected at the moment specifically. But, you know, what does the council think of all this happening, these different events coming into the town? Um, you know, they don't, they're not usually on board with things. I mean, I'll give you an example. We're developing a site down um, in Hampshire at the moment that we're doing as a, a co-living. It's a, it's a care conversion to a co-living block of cluster flats. But there are communal rooms where we're going to have a breakout, kind of like we're just discussing, a, you know, coffee workroom. What you know, the hell is that for? Ten term, well, no, computer terminals. Oh, uh, I see. Sorry. Yeah, like right, a, yeah. A, a working space, it's you know, right. like a serviced office yeah. in the block, co-living. So they yeah. come and work downstairs in their own, you know, room, gotcha. you know, probably about yeah. half this size with 10 or 15 terminals around it for use for that building. The council don't have a clue. Well, the, the council don't have a clue. Oh, we don't like that. It's too big. The site's too big. We don't understand it. Um, they still think it's some sort of big HMO, 30-odd yeah. uh, people. The planning, you know. the planning rule has always been you're allowed to use one room of your house as an office. That's been the rule for donkey's years. And, and I remember when I started working from home, I was worried naively because I, I was using two rooms. <gasps> So, oh dear. HMRC, how long have you been doing that for, John? <laughs> <laughs> many years, many years. But it's true, isn't it? The councils are still in the 1980s Absolutely. in terms of Absolutely. these kind of changes. So, the 1880s. 18, pretty much the 1880s. The 80s exactly. were, good, were good, weren't they, Ranjan? Will they catch up? Are they? <laughs> He's put you in that class, Ranjan. It's okay. <laughs> Will the councils have to catch up? Or does it they, they must, they they must be right, slowly, they? yeah. Because I think one of the other trends is older people moving back into the town centre to live because Very it's got so. local Very facilities. Good point. And that has to be facilitated with you know care services locally. Absolutely. I've just done two deals recently with two of the big retirement companies, one in Ipswich, they're building 70, 70 units in this town centre, and one in Claxton on Sea where they're doing the same thing, they're building 60. So, you know, it, it, it's very fashionable now for people to downsize older people back into town centres. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's actually another form of social housing and impact investing. You know, it's, it's, it's all well and good living in the middle of nowhere, you know, but you get to a point you know, where actually you want people well, with a similar experience. I think experience. the other thing, Tony, is you're releasing a family home. Bingo. You know, um, yep. so that, that's good. That's good for the you know the country as a whole as well. There's been a kind of move towards obviously trying to promote the high street by encouraging councils not to charge parking, for example. And that's, that's a, showing a shift in that direction, I guess. I think the government are, are doing what they realise the problem and the, uh, hence the town grants and so on that they've, they've made available to, to towns and cities. There's a huge amount of money being pumped into towns and cities across the UK. But there are a lot of councils who are 
being a little bit too greedy on the parking side. Oh, yes. And they're Still, really torpedoing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, because um, obviously that's in their domain as opposed to government's domain. Well, interestingly, in the little town near me, you can now get half an hour free parking with mm. your 10p fee that's, on Ringo. That, that's, but, that's bigger than... Yeah, but the uh, annual pass has doubled, more than doubled. So if you were a res resident without parking... But, yeah. yeah, that's interesting. That is the, um, the problem with the parking is it's not in tune with how things are changing because it's in tune with dash to the shops, buy a product and come out. It's not in tune with going for an experience. Yeah. And the last thing you want is if you're going out with your family and you're eating, you know, to hurry up your conversation thinking, oh, right, one minute 59, someone's going to... Someone's going to put yeah. a 50 pound yeah. fine. A friend, but just feel sorry for this friend of mine, if you, if you would. He's got 150 car parks across the UK and his business went for, he had, during the lockdown, he had 10% occupancy of those car parks. And it's only gone up to 35% now. So it just shows you how things are changing. Yeah, that's true. For the better. You could driving argue less, because, because you're driving less. less. Right, yeah. yeah, true. Um, high streets, um, we're talking about in a very positive way. Is there a knock-on impact um, on those city centres, those big town centres where people aren't going to work? Um, well, you know, I mean, the changes in, if you look at Oxford Street, for example, the changes in there are quite dramatic. They're pedestrianising, they're going to make two pedestrian plazas there. But what we're seeing is that, yeah, the top shop, you know, flagship stores are going and it's all this product, not people buying stuff. It's experiencing stuff. And it's also, London is a global city. You know, when you go in a hotel anywhere in the world, you see above reception clocks. They'll say London, Tokyo, Paris. London is a global city. So in those central locations like Oxford Street, the, all the major brands, yeah, people are looking online and all of that. It's like a they flagship store, aren't they? Really? Exactly. They want a flagship storeroom. And so central London, I think, will always be vibrant for that reason. What's going to happen, though, in towns where the big Debenhams has gone, for example? What, what do you do with a three-storey vast space that's pretty soulless in the middle of a town? Well, I'm glad you've asked us that because we're all experts <laughs> in that field, uh, one way or other, from funding right through to yeah. developing uh, and letting them. I mean, most of the big stores, they're too big uh, and they're going to be split down, perhaps residential um, above the first floor and potentially commercial on the ground. The biggest problem with the Debenham stores is they're very, very deep. So you can't get light into the middle of the building. So you've got to do a light well of some sort, atrium of some sort, which is very expensive to do. And in some cases, they're probably better to be knocked down and start again. It goes, on, right. goes on to the point you mentioned earlier about the, um, you thought that the uh, malls would stick around as much, mm. but every mall I've walked through in smaller towns, they're, they're half empty. We've got too many so, malls. I'm talking about yeah. the, you know, the mates. Big mates. The real yeah. 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 I, I got off yeah. at a shopping centre. Yeah. I got off at a shopping centre the other day um, for a third of what it cost to refurbish it seven years ago. Just to refurbish it, a third. And it was a quarter let, a third let um, and paying the rent. A third they call soft rents, not paying the full rent, and a third vacant. But of course, as the owner, you're paying the empty rates. <laughs> and and to maintain it and, and run, the, run the shopping centre was 950,000 a year. Okay, doke, okay, all right then. I think that's all we've got time for for now. But I think it's not as doom laden for the high street as maybe uh, the headlines might suggest. Hopefully plenty for you to take away. Thanks so much for joining us. Until next time, bye-bye. High streets across the land are changing forever. Basically, there's an oversupply of retail premises. Shops are closing down, more are gonna close down in the future. The government know this, and that's why they've introduced, or they're introducing a light touch planning system, which allows small developers to easily repurpose these buildings to residential use under a light touch planning regime called permitted development. Now, this is going to be the biggest revolution uh, and the biggest change and the biggest opportunity for property investors um, that I've ever seen. And this is all coming into effect on 1st of August. So you need to know what's happening and what properties to look for to take advantage of these opportunities so that you can get in there and take that first mover advantage. I've got a 90 minute free masterclass to get you ready for August the 1st. Make sure you join me, click the link below. Whether you're a beginner or expert, we'll get you started.